Elven Home, uh, which concentrates mainly on the building of the pub into which the Skittle Alley is going to go. And a slight change this week in that you don't get to look at my Fizzog, uh, because I'm going to go straight into just talking a little bit about this area. Uh, in response to a video, I can't remember if it was the last one or the one before, I think the last one, I had uh, a response from someone who pointed me in the direction of uh, a Motton Bailey Castle in Bishop Stortford. Mike something, I think, was the name. Because uh, a web link was included in it, Yam uh, Yahoo held it for review. And in the process of accepting it as a valid comment, I managed to delete it. So I've not been able to reply to you, Mike, but merely to say I did go and have a look at the uh, layout and size of the Motton Bailey Castle. And that has changed my intention about what's going to be here. Because when I looked at the size and scale of the hill on which the Motton Bailey uh, Castle would sit, um, it would just be too big. So I think I'm going to go back towards the idea that what is here is the remnants of uh, what was a castle many moons ago, which has all been robbed out but which does give a gentle gradient going up towards the edge of the hill there before I build whatever is going to go around the edge. Uh, and I'm no nearer to working out how I'm going to do that I, than I was last time I spoke to you. I have an idea, but I need to think about uh, whether it will work. But one thing I am going to be doing um, to help me with the uh, railway across the bridge is to have a go at using these things. Um, which are pro track aligners. You may have seen them uh, on various YouTube um, uh, channels. Which uh, these two things, you get two of these, and they they're they're made to slot together. And I will use that over on the uh, bridge there to align the track because I am going to have to be able to lift that bridge out of the way um, if I need to take this off. Uh, and it's a bit of a pain relining the track at the moment. I have to very gently uh, sort of squidge it into position. So at that, when I come to, to finalise that stuff at the back there, I'll, I'm going to be using those pro track liners and see how well they work. They do appear to be really quite good because there are a couple of other places where I might want to use them on the layout as well. So that gives you a bit of an introduction. Um, I am now going to be working for most of the rest of the video on the design and build of the pub uh, and one or two things that I failed to give attention to in the design last time round, which I'm going to put right. So uh, in a moment or two uh, you'll see me back at the desk uh, talking about the design and build of the pub for this area. Hello and welcome to Two to Watch, the series where I showcase two other Engage channels that I like to follow. The first channel today is the Heritage Line. This is a relatively new channel with the first video only being posted in May of this year. Tony tells us on his About page that this is his journey in Engage model railways on his main layout, the Heritage Line, which is loosely based on Gothland, which resides on the North York Moors Railway. But along the journey he will also be showing us his little exhibition layout Swades Pond, as well as showing us how-to tutorials and various things across the whole spectrum of model railways, showing his methods and approach to the various obstacles modellers face during their time through this hobby. Tony's been working on his main layout, the Heritage Line, for some years, but following a house move a few years ago, time to work on that has been limited. To help him reacquire his modelling skills, he's working on an X exhibition layout that he acquired some years ago. Originally a layout demonstrating continental rolling stock with continental scenery to match, Tony's working, as he says, to anglicise it. I've been enjoying watching Swade's Pond develop. He's been working to make changes to it and generally improve it to bring it up to exhibition standard. In the process, he is freely sharing his scenic techniques, including putting the eponymous Swade's Pond into the layout. And I'm looking forward both to seeing Swade's Pond completed and the development of the main layout over the coming months. 
The second channel this week is Colin's Engage. Colin's channel has been running for about two years, although I only came across it fairly recently. Colin has an extensive Engage layout which runs a wide mix of traction. I've been enjoying following the development of his layout and particularly as he starts work in scratch building a tunnel entrance, which has to operate on two levels with three lines going in on the lower level and one line going in at a higher level. As he says, you can't buy ready to plant tunnel entrances to that design. I was particularly intrigued in episode 49 where he showed us two machines that he was using to create textured paper. The first was a machine made by Brother that allowed him to cut a template, which he could then use through a, another machine to allow him to emboss paper that he had pre-coloured. The final effect was very impressive, and I will be interested to see the various uses he finds for both machines in his scratch building. I mentioned in my first of this series that if you are aware of an Engage channel that you think I might enjoy, or which might feature uh, in this series, please do let me know. I've had suggested three channels so far while I've been doing the series, and I do still have a large number of channels to work my way through before I exhaust my current uh, list. So that completes the, the two to watch for this edition. As ever, I will leave links to both channels for you to go across and look at them after this video, of course, and subscribe to them as I hope you will do. Having almost completed the Skittle Alley itself in the last episode, it's now time to move on to the pub itself. And what I'm going to show you here is the first steps that I've taken so far in the pub's build, uh, which I've got to a point where I'm just pausing to reflect, and I'll explain why when we get to that. Um, first of all, I'm, I was really touched by the concern shown by a number of subscribers uh, to the fact that I had completely omitted to take care of the personal comfort of the drinkers of this public house. Uh, Richard Wilson and Pete Townsend both pointed out that I had not made any provision in terms of the downstairs part of the pub for any lavatories, uh, which of course is a major omission if you're talking about a pub. However, uh, the cleverness of my design, or my ability to come up with a clever answer, <laughs> having made such a glaring omission, uh, that has been rectified in this plan. This area, as you may recall, originally was the kitchen stock area. It's not actually going to be modelled, but it did allow me to uh, block it off there. And now here is the gents, and here are the ladies' loos, uh, with necessary provision in each for uh, whatever may need to be done for personal comfort. And the doors go in off the corridor here, which is the adjoining corridor to where the Skittle Alley will be at the back. Uh, Mel Horrocks pointed out, or at least said, he didn't, couldn't see how you got from the ground floor to the upper floor. And that is because I didn't tell you. Um, what I should have said is that when you come in on the ground floor here, you can either go straight on to bring yourself out into the bar and into the pub, or you can climb a set of stairs, which if I move you slightly to the left, correspond with this set of stairs coming up into the central corridor uh, upstairs. So that's the connecting area, and that's why the door uh, is on the side of the pub here for entrance, because that, that gives you entrance both to the upper flat and to the pub uh, below. So. Those were just amendments for the purposes of um, responding to the concerns expressed uh, for the inhabitants and occupants uh, of, the, of the pub and its upstairs area. Uh, I'll take this away because I won't need this anymore. Um, Jeff Brewer gave me some useful information about the Skittle Alley itself, which I will bring back into shot. Um, uh, Jeff is from Darkest Somerset. Uh, and where Skittles is a, a, a major pastime. And indeed, it's because of relatives we have in North Somerset who plays, one of whom plays Skittles regularly, I think they both do actually, um, in and around the um, Somerset, uh, Gloucester, Devon area, Gloucestershire, Devon area, that inspired me to think about this uh, as a um, 
as a thing to put in the back of the pub. Uh, he pointed out that there needed to be a line at this end, um, obviously the point from which the ball must be thrown. Uh, so I just masked that up and painted the line in to give me, and that's come out quite well, I think. So that gives us the throwing line. He also mentioned that at the end of most skittle alleys, there is a ball drop at the end. Now, part of the reason I cut these elements off was that in the one that I was looking at, that appeared to be the ball drop. Uh, but the, the, the thing that he mentioned also was that, the, that very often the balls are going so fast that if this is a hard surface at the top, the balls will bounce back. And if a ball bounces back and knocks a pin down, it doesn't count. So what is, tends to happen at this end is that uh, an old piece of carpet or a mattress or something is there to absorb the uh, force of the ball hitting it so that the ball just is, is stopped and, and drops down. So when I put this into the pub, I will build a surround at this end um, and we'll put, I've, I've got some carpets, I think, from a scale scenes kit. So we'll put one of those into business as just being draped there uh, to allow the balls to hit it and drop down into the ball drop, which is what this is meant to be. But I'll make a small area at the end as well when it goes into the pub. So that is, I think, complete and I will move it out of the way. Uh, what I have here is where I've got to so far in building the pub. So at the moment what I've done is I've cut out the base and what I've marked on the base, and that this is the back of the pub, this is the front, what I've marked on the base is the rough areas of uh, the internal divisions. Now I've yet to determine what I'm going to use for the front windows. If the front windows are large enough, then I will model the bar and I will probably model some benches uh, on the walls and put some people in there uh, and maybe have a few people standing. Getting tables at N-Gage is incredibly difficult. There is seven models do various bits of furniture, but 90% of the furniture that's there is not stuff I could possibly use. Um, so I think I will go for the kind of pub which has benches around the sides. Um, I'm not quite spit and sawdust type of pub, and I have been in one or two of those in my time, um, but not far off. Um, so that you can look in and see people and we'll, we'll try and model the bar area somehow and see what uh, what we can pull off. The alternative is that yes you can see in but I'll put a piece uh, a photograph possibly a semicircular photograph of the interior of the pub uh, and as I'm saying this that is appealing to me quite considerably. Um, the back of the pub obviously has the skittle alley and that will sit here I'll get it the right way around it will sit here almost up to the wall and it will be flush with the back wall um, so I can put the ball drop and the piece of carpet on the wall on this side. And as I said I would do, I've constructed now the rear wall of the Skittle Alley. Um, and this is constructed entirely from strip styrene and the windows. So these four windows are from the kit, the UPVC style windows from York Model Rail. Um, which if I turn it round, it's probably easier to see this side. You can see that the first thing I did was to glue those three windows together. Uh, rather handily, they were only two millimetres short of the height of the wall at that side. I mean, it's so, so unusual to come out so precise. So I then glued a piece of two millimetre strip styrene, which is 0.75 millimetres deep, which is the depth of the windows. Uh, once I had done that, I then cut out from a piece of 0.75 millimetre thick uh, styrene card the final element which I needed uh, to make the length correct, which was, as you may recall from last time, 19.4 millimetres long. And that gave me a back wall that was exactly the right length. Um, I then got some 2.5 millimetre strip styrene, again 0.75 millimeter deep, and put a piece along this length here and pieces down so that it framed the window. 
and I think what I'm probably going to do is paint these whether it's wood or black but to, to, to provide a frame for the windows that sit below. Uh, I then put the window on the side that was just fitted on uh, so it butted up against the, the side and again added a, I'll show you from this side, a two millimeter strip there and then a 2.5 millimeter strip along this side to cover over the join and then I don't know if you can see if I bring it up to the camera a bit more I've put an, a piece of L-shaped um, strip styrene on each of the corners to cover the corner joins and that also has the uh, happy uh, effect of completing the look of framing. Now this 0.75 millimeter card is very thin and light comes through it very easily. Interestingly these are made of much thicker or denser material and light doesn't come through. So I'm going to put another piece of 0.75 millimeter in there to make that flush, um, which I think will look good because I think that will look like the wall, whereas these are indentations to take the, uh, the windows. Um, and that should, that should uh, look quite good. I think I'm going for an exterior design and this is one of the things that I'm just musing on. I think I'm going to go for an exterior design which is a kind of plaster over brick uh, so that I can just paint the whole thing possibly using a similar technique to the one that I used on the um, church because uh, I liked the way that came out and I think using some of the greys that I've got there we might well be able to do something similar for the for the pub. The only reservation I've got which is why I've got to do a test is whether the card I'm using for the other walls will start buckling and bowing under wet paint um, because I have a memory that I did that once before and the building <laughs> went all jelly on me uh, after <laughs> as, the, as the paint dried. So the back is there. I've also cut the roof which is now going to be a flat roof um, so that will have a kind of um, felted effect on the on the roof and that will give me so in effect I've got the rear wall of the of the pub for the skittle alley so that's that's completed and that sits perfectly on the base so that will go in there uh, I've got to construct the door here because I'm going to build that as a separate unit and and stick that in and as you can see from here I've cut the two side walls of the pub the main part of the pub which will sit Actually, actually on the card here and I've cut out the front wall which will sit here and oh, it will sit here there you are you can see it now that's a good idea isn't it uh, and I've marked up the back for the upper windows because as I say I'm still struggling in my mind what I want for windows there and I'm not going to rush um, just picking on windows I've got. I've got lots of different types of windows from various scratch builds I've made but I want this to be right um, so I'm just holding off at the moment. So the next thing for me to do is to do a test of the uh, painting up. I've got a spare piece of card here. I'm going to paint this up with the paint that I've used before just to see the extent to which it, it bows and buckles because it may be that I can still use this but I'll just have to brace it internally which won't be particularly difficult because um, I rather like the idea rather than it being brick built or, or slate or something um, that it's the kind of stuccoed effect on the outside which is just painted all over in, in one colour and I think that might look, that might look quite good uh, for the pub. I've also got to settle how I'm going to run the lighting inside because I do want if I have the windows looking in there will need to be a light here there most definitely is going to be a light here so you can see the skittle alley um, I don't think I'm going to light the upstairs but I'll see how I feel so some internal walls will be needed here uh, there'll need to be an internal wall there at the very least even if I'm not modeling um, the the bar area because I don't want light too much light bleeding from one to the other and I suspect I will use the just plug system as well. So that's where I am on building the pub 
Um, there'll be more in the next episode because I'm recording this pretty close to release date because I've been taking a bit of time thinking how I'm going to build this thing. I don't think the build is going to be difficult, um, he said, famous last words, but I do think getting the design right and being happy about what the external of the pub will look like uh, really is quite important. So that's enough uh, of that for now uh, and we'll move on to uh, the next part of the video. Well, with the reappearance of train cam, uh, that brings us pretty nearly to the end of this episode of Elden Home. But before I finished, I just wanted to mention something that's been going through my mind for a while around this area of the layout. Uh, I said oh, a long time ago that I was going to work on the scenic work from the back of the layout to the front. And we've got as far pretty much as the houses and its dividing wall. Uh, and if I move you around very slightly to the uh, coaling stage, but there the scenic work appears to have finished. Uh, and although I did a bit of painting, I've not really done much in the way, particularly of ballasting around this area. So I think I'm going to probably have a start of looking at this whole area and completing the scenic work. The only slight problem, and it's a twinge, which is that these are the original Metcalf engine sheds. Uh, which you remember when I built the one up at the top, they're quite sturdy, but they're not as good as the newer design. Uh, and I also need to think about putting some hard standing around here, because if I lift this one up as well, just to move that out of the way, um, this, these wouldn't just sit with the bare lines in this way in an engine shed. Most of this area would be um, hard standing of some kind, um, to allow more ease of uh, movement around and it certainly wouldn't be I don't think ballast in between the track there um, so I'm thinking a little bit about whether these engine sheds do actually give me what I want uh, whether I go for the new Metcalf ones or whether I scratch build myself uh, an engine shed that would actually be combined so rather than these being two separate buildings this would be an engine shed still set back uh, because of the way the track layout is and where the points are um, and putting some proper hard standing down there. But I think this is the area now where I want to get on with doing scenic work separate from Elven Home because you can get a bit taken up in just one area of your layout if you're not careful and the other parts really sort of get a bit forgotten. And I would like to try and get this area completed uh, even if it does mean 
doing something dreadful like ballasting. So uh, that's on the agenda, possibly in the next uh, few weeks, but we'll see where I've got to by the time we come to the next video. And with that, that really does bring me to the end of this edition of Elven Home. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe and, and hit the bell notification so that you know when uh, I'm going to be uploading videos. If you've got any comments, please do give me comments because they're all so helpful. Uh, and of course, uh, if you've liked the video, well, give it a thumbs up too. Uh, but with that, until I speak to you again in a couple of weeks' time, that's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.